Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we'll be checking out the 2015 Lexus RC350. This is a two-door coupe with four seats and this particular trim is the rear-wheel drive F-Sport. You've got inlets up front to feed cool air to the front disc brakes, LED low beam, high beam, and daytime running lights. This vehicle has a coefficient of drag of 0 0.30. To open up the trunk, simply hold the button on the key fob. Not a huge trunk, but a decent amount of space and the rear seats do fold down 60-40 split. Underneath the floor mat, you've got your tools and the spare tire, a nice yellow. You might just want to buy four of these. So let's have a look under the hood. Now packaging is a bit tight and you do have lots of plastic covers. This main cover, however, you can easily remove. Checking for serviceability, we've got our battery on the passenger side all the way back. I like seeing that from a weight distribution point of view and it's also easily accessible. You've got your engine oil dipstick over here, engine air filter, which actually does have quick release tabs on it once you remove this plastic covering. You've got essentially what is your radiator cap and a coolant fill and you have your windshield washer fluid and then your brake fluid reservoir to fill right there. So for the most part, everything pretty accessible. Now this is the same 3.5 liter V6 that was found in the Lexus GS350 that I reviewed, except this year the compression ratio has increased from 11.5 to 1 to 11.8 to 1. Aluminum block and heads, direct and port injection, dual overhead cams with 24 valves and variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. The engine produces 306 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 277 pound-feet of torque at 4800 RPM. So let's follow the path of the intake here. We've got our air coming in up front, passing through the filter here to the left. It's then passed back to the electronically controlled throttle body. I'm assuming this is some sort of induction noise amplifier here, which you've got on the piping for the intake. Then after passing through the throttle body, it's into this plastic intake manifold where it's then passed individually to the six cylinders, then routes to a true dual exhaust and passes all the way back through individual pipes for each cylinder bank. The exhaust heads to the rear, entering a muffler on each side, exiting through one of two tailpipes. Power is sent to the rear wheels through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Staggered tires and wheels with 19-inch wheels up front with Bridgestone 235 over 40 tires and 265 over 35 Bridgestone tires in the rear. Up front, very large 14-inch ventilated disc brakes matched with a double wishbone style suspension. Here you can see the steering linkage coming in and then the pretty beefy anti-roll bar above it. And here you can see the porting up front to allow for air to channel through the front and cool off these disc brakes. Also great to see aluminum used for the upper control arm, the knuckle, and the lower control arm. In the rear, 12.2 inch ventilated disc brakes matched with a multi-link suspension. So quite a bit going on in here. You've got a separate coil and shock. This allows for more space in the trunk you can see the coil spring behind it here you have an upper control arm this is aluminum and an aluminum hub you've got another link here a link down here here you can see the anti-roll bar coming in linking with this control arm down here and this is actually a steering linkage so you do have rear wheel steering this allows for more maneuverability at lower speeds and better stability at high speed corners so here's another view of that steering linkage and down the center, you can see the drive shaft. So let's take a look at the interior. To unlock the vehicle, keyless entry, simply open the door as you would normally. And then to lock it, there's a button on the outside of the handle. Leather seats, 10-way power adjustable driver's seat, and three memory settings. So checking out the interior, I actually really like it. It has this snug cockpit feel to it, but at the same time, it's very comfortable. I really do like these seats, uh, and they hold you in quite well. To the left and right of your knees, you've got a soft touch, you know, cushioned leather for your legs to rest against should they come into contact, so that's nice to see. Plenty of room for your legs underneath the steering column and plenty of leg room. Headroom is slightly limited, uh, but that said, I'm 6'1 and I fit just fine. Now the steering wheel, leather wrapped, has a good feel to it and you've got paddle shifters on the wheel itself. You also have a decent amount of controls on here so you can scroll through your audio, different information on the display, and then use the Bluetooth calling system. Now the display is actually pretty cool. You've got a large tachometer and then in the center of it your speed and showing what gear you're in. But you can actually shift this aside and then you can go into some different vehicle information. So you've got your fuel economy, you've got your range, 
eco indicator, your tire pressure, gear position. So different information, you've got your navigation, your music, uh, any messages in there. So it's actually pretty cool that you can shift this around uh, and the display is kind of virtual and you know you can customize it. Now, if you're in eco, it's gonna look different than if you're in normal or if you turn it into sport or sport plus. On the left here, you've got power windows for both sides, automatic, and then you do have electronically adjustable mirrors with blind spot monitoring on them, and then the three memory settings, as I mentioned earlier. Now, moving on to the infotainment system, instead of that mouse that there was previously, now there's this touchpad, uh, and actually it's not too bad. It does individually select each option, and it has a little feedback that it actually kind of like hits you with this small little force in there so that you know that you're on each one, and you can adjust that Personally, I find it slightly annoying, so you can turn it off actually, and then it just selects these individually. Uh, and the touchpad actually does work all right, so no real complaints there. I think the one thing of this interior that doesn't quite fit Everything seems really nice, except for this area right here where you have your audio and some of your climate control settings. And I don't mind actually these volume knobs here and the temperature scrolls uh, to, to turn the temperature up or down. You kind of just slide up or slide down. It actually works quite well, but some of these buttons just kind of feel cheap and it's got this hard plastic to it, so not the greatest feel to it. That said, everything else about the interior is actually really, really nice. Uh, and you know these buttons down here you can change between different settings so you've got eco mode and you know that's going to have a softer suspension setting as well as it'll keep the transmission in higher gears and you're also going to reduce the throttle uh, so the throttle mapping is less aggressive as you press in the accelerator pedal more it'll have uh, less throttle opening versus if you go over to sport or sport plus these are going to adjust the suspension, so the Sport Plus is going to firm it up a bit and actually firm up the steering as well and also make the throttle more responsive, so as you push in a little bit, it'll open the throttle a little bit more. You can also turn off your traction control and stability control using this button here. You've got heated and cooled seats up front with three different settings, so that's nice to see. You know, leather seats have a smaller temperature range of being comfortable, but when you can both heat and cool them, they're actually really nice. As far as storage goes, you've got a little bit here on the left. You have a pretty large center console, which you've got two USB ports and an auxiliary audio input, as well as a 12-volt outlet. And then you also have the glove compartment as well power moonroof up top and now let's discuss visibility so looking out the front visibility is not too bad the sides you know it's a little narrow but not too bad checking your blind spot no you can't do that so you're, you're going to have to use the mirrors here uh, but they do have blind spot detecting so you can see when there is someone in your blind spot and you can always lean forward and look back if you really need to and then checking out the rear somewhat limited uh, rear view but you also do have a rear camera when you're in reverse and I actually really like this mirror here the kind of frameless mirror that design is becoming a little bit more popular and I really like it not having that big black outline around it uh, kind of looks tacky so good to see this I really like this rear view mirror now the audio system in this is probably my favorite of the vehicles I've tested along with the GS350. The Mark Levinson audio system, 17 speakers, 835 watts, and it's absolutely phenomenal. You don't have any rattling of any of the panels in here, just a really rich, crisp audio, and I love it. Fantastic audio in this car. And overall, I'd say the quality of this interior is very high. Okay, so sitting in the rear, I can do this. We're gonna move this forward. Oh, that's nice. This is just magnetic. Very cool. Then crawl back here. Oh, God. So, yeah, as you can see, you know, you're not going to put an adult back here. You do have ventilation back here, which is nice, and you've got some speakers right there, so probably equally amazing audio back here, uh, and you've got this little tray in the center, so, you know, maybe a kid could fit back here, but really you're not going to be buying this car for the practicality of four seats. Okay, so let's take it for a test drive. Now, driving the RC350 after having driven the GS350, I'm actually quite a bit surprised at how similar the two vehicles feel. And that's both good and bad. 
Now, the bad is that it's not quite as sporty as you might think it would be, uh, you know, converting over to this coupe where your rear wheel drive and, you know, it's a little bit lighter and I would have the assumption that it would feel quite a bit sportier, maybe be a little bit quicker. It actually has the same 0 to 60 5.8 seconds and I was testing the all-wheel drive GS350 versus this is rear wheel drive. It's about 250 pounds lighter than that GS350 I was testing. So you would think it would be a little bit quicker but it's actually not. Now this car weighs 3,750 pounds and you can feel it. I mean it's it's got amount of heft to it so when you put your foot down it takes a little bit for it to get going. And the engine is strong, I'll give it that. You know, it doesn't have a ton of torque down low, but that's what gears are for. So this has an eight speed automatic transmission, which when you leave it in automatic mode is actually fine. When you put it into manual mode is when you start to feel like, well, it could be better. So if I do switch it over to manual mode, the thing with planetary automatic gearboxes is they're really just not meant for paddle shifters because they just shift a little bit slower than most transmissions. So when you are in manual mode, you know, you have a little bit of a delay between shifting gears and it's fairly smooth, but it just takes a bit of time. And the other thing is like, let's say you're on the highway in eighth gear and you want to drop it down to fourth. Well, it actually selects each gear on the way down. So if you go one, two, three, four, it goes seven, six, five, four. And it actually takes that long to do it. It doesn't just shift from eight to four. So if you leave it in automatic mode and you put your foot down, it'll go right to the gear that it needs versus if you have it in this manual mode, you know, it's not going to select it as quick and you have to drop through the different gears. Now, if you're doing more sporty driving, then you're going to be, you know, within one gear of what you want. So it's not that big of a deal, but it still is kind of slow to shift gears. Now the throttle pedal feel is pretty good and the brakes are very strong and it actually does have a very good brake feel to it. Nice progressive rate of resistance as you press down on it and good strong brakes. Okay, let's get a highway pull in here, put it in sport plus and foot all the way down. Not bad acceleration. So driving on the highway, not too much noise, a little tire noise that you can hear. Uh, most of it I would say is tire noise, not really any wind noise. Uh, we're looking at about 75, 76 decibels. So it is uh, decently quiet and you can have a nice conversation in here without talking too loud. Now one other thing about the manual mode is when you are on the highway, you can't use cruise control with it, which seems a bit strange. So you pretty much got to put it over into automatic mode uh, and then you can turn the cruise control on. Okay, so I've completed my fuel economy test run. This car is rated 19 in the city, 28 on the highway. And as you can see, I achieved 25.9 miles per gallon on my fuel economy test course, 53 miles primarily highway with some city and some hills mixed in. So not particularly impressive, 25.9. That's actually the exact same number I got in the Lexus GS350, which was a little bit heavier and also all wheel drive, but both of them did have the same engine. So this vehicle actually has a history of its fuel economy. So looking at the previous trips, 25.9 is actually the best recorded fuel economy for this car. So you're looking at about 26 miles per gallon, best case uh, based on this trip history. You know, it's got a good strong engine. It's just so heavy that you don't get to really take advantage of the amount of power it does have and can put down. It does stay pretty flat in the corners, very large front anti-roll bar. So, you know, the vehicle, the, the handling itself does feel pretty good for as heavy as it is. You do feel the weight in the corners, but that said, it stays pretty flat and the steering feel is pretty good, seems pretty precise and goes exactly where you point it. Now this does have rear wheel steering, so at higher speeds, you know, the rear wheels are going to point in the same direction as the front, and at lower speeds they'll give you a little bit more agility and more turning radius. Uh, and I won't say that I can feel it, because I can't. If I were to drive this and no one told me that the rear wheels steered, then I wouldn't know. But it does give you a better uh, turning radius at low speeds, 
and it gives you better stability at high speeds. So overall, if you're looking for a GS350 that's more sporty, uh, I don't necessarily think this is it. You know, it's pretty heavy, it's not all that quick to accelerate, and it would be nice if there was a different transmission option, a dual clutch or a manual to be able to select your gears and also have quicker shifts. Also, there's not really any fuel economy benefit to this RC350 over the GS350, even though it's a lighter car. Now, if you want a GS350 that's a two-door, a little bit sportier, and a little bit lighter, then this could make sense. It's a very comfortable ride. I really like the interior, and I really like the exterior as well. You also have an incredible sound system. So from a luxury standpoint, it's a great car, very comfortable, very quiet, fantastic audio, great interior. If you want something a little bit more sporty, then it's not necessarily the greatest pick. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.